Hey, I'm Kerry Grinkmeyer, best of uh, us investors. I'm the host of the show. Uh, I'm on vacation, actually, in uh, Watercolors, uh, which is on the panhandle of uh, Florida, and we're renting a home. And I, I knew there was going to be an opportunity in, in real estate, and I want to bring that to, to my viewers. I want you to be aware of what's going to happen and how you might be in a position to take it advantage of it. Um, we at Best of Us Investors have three objectives in mind. One is to make good investment decisions, whether it's in the stock market or it's in real estate or whatever. Number two is to keep more of what you make. And real estate in particular gives you some real advantages of how to structure it so that you take advantage of the tax codes that are built around real estate. I would say many of the fortunes other than than entrepreneurship uh, that are made in the in the world are made through real estate. And then our fourth, uh, or excuse me, our third objective is to uh, accumulate um, family wealth. And when I say family wealth, I'm, I have a specific number in mind, and that's $24 million. And I choose that number because that's what our federal tax code allows each of us, a cup by couple, to pass on a state tax free. It's about $12 million per person. So if you gotta have a goal, uh, and one of your goals is to create family wealth, let's pick that number. For a married couple or significant others, let's find $12 million, uh, $12 million a piece that we can pass on and leave something behind and make a difference in our life. So let's talk a little bit more about what I see happening here in, uh, in Florida and probably and possibly in your neighborhood. And then I'll go in a little bit about what I'm trying to do and how I'm go going to try to take advantage of this major change that's gonna happen in the real estate um, structure of the United States um, in the coming months. We're renting this house here for two weeks in watercolors. Uh, it's costing us about six grand, so the, the house rents for around $3,000 a week. And as I was here, I noticed a lot of activity right down the street there, and it's a, a house with the same floor plan, about 1,500 square feet. It's got three bedrooms, three baths, a nice open uh, floor plan. And um, this is in watercolors, a very, very active area for vacationers. Roughly, there's a roughly two, 1,200 homes in this area, ranging in price from probably a low of a million to a high of 10 million. And they rent very heavily in the spring and in the summer months. What caught my eye was the house down the street is uh, under foreclosure. It went um, on sale um, on Saturday, and I went down and talked to the realtor, and it sold on Sunday. That's right. It sold for nine hundred and fifteen thousand dollars. So it was a, it was about probably a thirty percent discount from uh, a house that was in in perfect condition, and I my interest is this is what's going to happen to the real estate market as all these foreclosures in the United States come to pass. Let's sit down and talk about it. It's uh, estimated that there are roughly 9.9 .9 million people in the United States today behind on their mortgage or their rent. That's roughly 13% of the homes in, in, in the United States. Those homes are going to come out of forbearance, uh, I believe it's December the 31st. So there's gonna be a lot of homes coming on the market that uh, people are gonna be underwater. And it may be they have some equity in the house, but they need to get that equity out because maybe that's two, a two working family and um, one of them is unemployed and they can't make the mortgage payment anymore. So there's going to be a rush of homes, a rush of foreclosures. We've seen Invitation Homes, the largest owner of single family home rentals in the United States, say they were raising $1 billion in order to take advantage of this flood of homes that are gonna to come to the market. So how do you as an investor take advantage of it? Well, 
I'm making a move to uh, put together some investors who are looking for, say, a 9, 10, 11, 12 percent return on their investment by uh, uniting a group of realtors together so that we know how to identify good rental properties and how to uh, figure in what's the cost going to be to bring them up to, to speed in rental and what's the management fee going to be and what's the uh, insurance going to be and what's the end up cap rate. What are you going to make on your money on the investment? It's a tremendous opportunity because of the forbearance that is going to end. Um, as I say, this house we saw down here um, sold in one day. It, it had been in foreclosure. They cleaned it up, did a little bit of paint, and it still needs, I would say, about $35,000 worth of work done on it. But it's, uh, that's the real estate market that, that we're going to be looking at. And I want you to get kind of a view of what the beach looks like. And as you can see, it's, the beach is pretty much uh, pristine because they don't take the dunes down. Here they have a bit of a watering station. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down here on the beach and we're going to talk about what my plans are for using real estate to build wealth in uh, my portfolio. That's going to be somewhat resistant because the fact is, folks, they just aren't making any more of this. This is all that God made and this is what's left and as you can see down there further down um, it's built up it's all homes that uh, have one of the most magnificent views in the world and we'll go back down and let's talk about how i'm going to make this part of my investment portfolio so this is why people want to own property at the beach what you see right here it's uh, Tuesday morning. It's about nine o'clock in the morning and uh, the traffic hasn't come yet, but this is the appeal. Uh, and this is why I want to own a piece of property. It's going to change the way I live. How is that? Well, first of all, it'll be a place that Nita and I come to on a regular basis and we enjoy this kind of uh, relaxation. Buying a house here, though, is different than buying a house in Birmingham or wherever you might live. For the most part, people buy rental property for the pur purpose of income. That's not my motive. My motive here is appreciation. I equate that to buying a stock. You can buy a stock for its dividends or you can buy a stock for its appreciation. This is total appreciation and that is to say I believe the value of this real estate will escalate faster than the real estate in Birmingham or pretty much most everywhere else in the world because it is so unique and because they aren't making any more of it. They're, the, it's used up. It's basically at this point, it's a situation where people buy property on the beach and tear what's down, what's there down and build something new. I'm looking, what I have to do this is, and let's use some numbers, basically I'm going to have to find a house for that I can buy, say, its normal rate, let's use a round number of a million dollars. I'm hoping that as a part of the um, foreclosures and the end of forbearance, there's going to be some houses in here that are going to sell for 25% off. Okay, so I buy it for $750,000. i am going to have to put together $75,000 as far as a down payment. I'll then shop and get as cheap a mortgage as I can and um, make payments on that mortgage. I'm basically, if you look at it, I'm leveraging up my $75,000 to $750,000 or uh, thereabouts. That being done now, all I really want to do is create enough income to pay that mortgage, pay the insurance, pay the maintenance and uh, the management of it and break even. 
That would be ideal. It doesn't have to happen, but that would be ideal. Then what I get to do is write off the interest on that mortgage against my uh, YouTube income or my real estate income. I also then get to depreciate the asset, the house, because it is a rental house, it is a business. I get to depreciate it uh, at a rate of uh, 27.5 years. And that then, while my asset, which I believe is the highest appreciating asset in my world, is going up in value, I'm getting to depreciate it. Now, eventually you say, okay, uh, 20 years from now you sell it, you're going to have a huge capital gains. Well, again, the tax law works in my favor. I can do what is called a 1031 exchange and take my million dollar house that is appreciated to three million dollar house and put it into a a uh, reciprocal until I find a like property exchange. It's called a 1031 exchange. So now I can take my $3 million worth of equity and go buy a $6 million house and do the same thing over and over and over again. And again, just remember, Donald Trump was in the real estate business. This is how you build wealth. Now, okay, let's say that within 10 years, I still own the property. It's worth, it was moved up from a million to three million and I die. Well, it's an asset, just like if it was a stock. My children inherit it, my grandchildren inherit it, and they get a step up in basis. What does that mean? That means they don't have to pay the capital gains on the gain I made from my purchase price of a million or 750,000, whichever, to three million. They don't pay capital gains. That's how you build wealth. So there's more to it than just buying stocks and bonds and on the stock market. You build a equity base. The other thing that you need to understand is that if I leveraged like that in the stock market, every day that stock is reevalued, and my broker will come and say, "Hey, it's gone down in value, and your interest, you owe you. We, we're going to create a margin call." So they sell my stock in order to cover their margin. That doesn't happen in real estate because real estate is not re-evalued on a daily basis. So you don't get margin calls. So you can weather it through a storm, which there may be. But the fact is they aren't making any more of this, particularly any more that looks like this. So that's why I am going to add aggressively to my portfolio in real estate because of the opportunity that is coming as a result of the coronavirus. That's what created this. So that's what I'm doing. So that's an example of the ways that I want to invest. And I want to teach you to invest. I want to teach you to make good, smart, uh, investment decisions. I want you to keep more of what you make. Understand the tax code. And then I want you to create wealth. This could add to my wealth of maybe three thousand, three three million dollars over the rest of my life. And what do I have to do? Just be smart enough to do it. The renters are going to pay for it. I I, I will go to one of the uh, management agencies here when I find the house I want and, and, and say, give me comparables on how much rent I can expect and can I expect to cover my mortgage, my insurance, my maintenance, and my management fees. And, and if I don't, then I have a little bit of a loss, which I again write off against my other income. Now again, my situation is different. I don't need the income. I want the appreciation. If you want income, we'll talk about that in another video as to how you can make real estate a way to generate another income for you. So that's best of us investors. That's a, my take. I'll give you some more takes on this as we go through the week. Um, 
But if you like this video, give me a thumbs up, uh, subscribe to the channel, and uh, and then come join the channel. The, the uh, if you join the channel, it costs you three dollars and ninety nine cents uh, a month, and that goes to my charitable foundation to help find a cure for cancer. Um, if you want to become a part of the tribe, go to right here, bestofusinvestors.com. Sign up. I'll send you my morning letter. Uh, I'll give you a link to our Discord, and there is that's where we get into even more depth of what I'm trading, what I'm doing, and how you can create family wealth for yourself. So thanks a lot. Uh, it's it's uh, not quite nine o'clock, and you can see um, it's very calm, very blue water, just a magnificent day on the beach.